Hello, my name is Donna Young. I'm Deputy Head here at Chesterton and I also lead the English Department. I'm going to talk, be talking to you a little bit about how Year 11 students can revise for English at home. Just before we get going with specific English revision, uh, I think it's interesting to tell you that I'm not only uh, a leader of the English Department here at Chesterton, I'm also a GCSE examiner. I examine for GCSE English Language, GCSE English Literature and also IGCSE English Language. So I'm talking to you both as a teacher but also as a GCSE examiner and what the exam boards are particularly looking for. Just a note on revision in general, here you can see an attention span graph and there's a lot of research points to the idea that the average human has a really good attention span of about 30 minutes and you can see from the graph that at the end of 30 minutes the attention span is starting to wane a little bit and that's worth thinking about when students are planning their revision. Planning revision in blocks of 30 minutes will really help them make the most of their revision and at the end of 30 minutes having a quick break a snack, some fresh air, a, a drink, something like that, just to break up the revision time will be really, really useful to them. I don't suggest uh, breaking up the revision with something like Facebook or Netflix, anything that's going to mean that the break turns into a much longer break, just something to break up um, revision into those 30 minute slots will be really useful. Okay, so let's look at English in particular. I've got there a list of the English teaching groups and the teachers just so that you can see what your specific child is studying. There are some discrepancies amongst different groups so uh, students will know themselves but it's worth you knowing as well what it is that they're actually studying. So English revision, these are my really my top tips and I'm going to start with English language. In the English language exam which is worth about 60% Students will be tested on their ability to read and write. Now we know that students can read and write, but they need to be able to do it at a very high level with accuracy and precision. And the only way they're going to be able to do that is if they practice those skills. So when we're talking about revision for English language, we're talking about practicing the skills of reading and writing. Reading, it would be really good if students are doing a minimum of 10 minutes of reading a day. That's really, really important. They're going to have to read a lot of information in the exam and they're going to have to do it under stressful conditions. So the more they're reading now, the more um, they'll be setting themselves up to do well in the exam. And reading what? They can be reading a whole different range of things. If they're avid readers and they're reading novels, great. But actually, it's going to be really important to read some shorter non-fiction texts because that's what they're going to be faced with in the exam. They will be presented with two non-fiction texts, most likely newspaper articles, and they will be asked to analyse them. And when we're talking about newspaper articles, we're talking about quite meaty, quite weighty articles, not a short summary on a website. So really students need to be getting into the habit of reading quite lengthy newspaper articles, quite dense, with lots of dense information. So again, they're ready for the exam. And when they're reading, they need to be asking the question, why? Why has the writer written the article? What, what do they want us to think or feel? Are they trying to persuade us of something? Are they trying to entertain us? And then once they've worked out why it's been written, they're then thinking, why has the writer used the words and the techniques they have? Why have they used those specific words in the headline? Why have they used those punctuation marks? If they've got a rhetorical question in there, why have they done that? And then thinking about the article itself, why have they started the article in the way they have? Why have they ended the article in the way they have? And then in each paragraph, why are they saying the words they're saying, the information that they're giving? So we're analysing all the time. Now that can take a little bit of time and students may wish to do something quicker in terms of revision sometimes. And that's where the junk mail that comes through your door can be really useful. Picking up a junk leaflet and asking those same why questions can be really powerful. A junk leaflet has been written for a purpose. It's trying to get you to do something, to buy something, to think something. And somebody has been paid to write it. So again, some decisions have been made. So why have they used the words they've used? If they've get used a question, why? Why have they used the format that they've used, are there bullet points, are there subheadings, and again, in particular, what words have been used.
And on a junk mail leaflet, there's normally a picture. And it's interesting to be able to think, why has that picture been used? And how does it help the purpose of the leaflet? Because there is a chance that there will be a picture associated with an article that's given in the exam. And there are marks available for being able to say, this picture is a good choice because it helps with the writer's purpose to achieve X, Y, and Z. So junk mail can be really, really powerful as well. And you'll notice at the towards the bottom of this page, I've written some notes about speaking and listening. There is a huge correlation between good speaking and listening and good reading and writing. If students are able to verbalise their opinion on a newspaper article and to be able to precisely and um, with real sort of um, accuracy be able to talk about why something's being written, they will be able to write it down. So there's no reason why all revision has to be written all the time. Actually talking about it is just as good and sometimes it can be less appealing to sit down and actually start writing and it can be more appealing just to sit and talk about something and that's really valuable and so students should be encouraged to do that. So as well as reading for 10 minutes a day, it's a really good idea to put some focus on spelling, punctuation and vocabulary. As a GCSE examiner, I am asked to comment on all three of those things. Spelling is fairly straightforward. I'm asked to comment on the degree of accuracy of spelling. When it comes to punctuation, I'm asked to comment on punctuation used between sentences, so full stops, exclamation marks, question marks, and I'm also asked to comment on punctuation within sentences, so speech marks, commas, semicolons, colons, etc. And for those really high grades, the exam boards are looking for those, the full range of punctuation to be used with real accuracy. If students are a little bit unsure about the difference, for example, between a comma and a semicolon, I've given a really good website, theoatmeal.com, that teaches punctuation through comic strips. So a really good revision activity would be to revise some of those punctuation marks and be able to use them well. Vocabulary, I'm asked to comment on the um, extensive range of vocabulary that students use. If students are reading every day for 10 minutes, newspaper articles, blogs, all sorts of different things, their vocabulary will be expanding because they will be being exposed to lots of different vocabulary all the time. So if they're reading, vocabulary can be ticked off the list. If you think vocabulary needs a bit of a boost or if your student feels they need a bit of a boost, doing things like learning a couple new words a week and trying to get them into conversation in the family home can be really useful. My final top tip is really to do with GCSE English Literature. Students are studying a range of texts. All students are doing Of Mice and Men, A View from the Bridge and Unseen Poetry and then they're either doing Animal Farm or Lord of the Flies. Seeing those texts up in front of them on stage, on TV, or hearing them on the radio can be really, really good for them to really sort of revise those characters, those themes, those plots. I have sent a parent mail out to say that Of Mice and Men, the National Theatre production, is being screened in Cambridge cinemas on Thursday the 19th of November. And I can't recommend enough that students go and see see that production. It will sell out fast because students across the city are going to want to see it so please do book tickets to go and see that. A View from the Bridge is a slightly trickier one, it's a bit, it's, it's far rarer, we don't see it um, on stage that often. There is word that it's going to be revived in March next year and I will keep you posted but right now on BBC Radio 3 there is a fantastic radio play version of A View from the Bridge and it's on for the next 14 days and it would be fantastic revision for the mock exams. So that's worth checking out as well. And I'll keep you posted as we know that other things are coming up. The rest of the booklet I'm not going to read through right now, but you will be able to go through in your own time. Uh, on the next couple of pages, English language and English literature, we have some very specific revision activities. So if students or your student says, I'm going to do some English language revision, oh, I, I can't, I don't know what to do. Picking one of these things from this table would be really good. And the same for English literature. They're all there, ready to go. If there's any resources referred to, students can find those on the revision website. But these are really good concrete ac revision activities that students can have, have a go at. And the other thing that's included in this booklet 
is how to get an A or an A star in both English language and English literature. And I've put this in here along with some um, actual A star examples of answers for English language and English literature and I've annotated them so that parents you can see actually what it is that we're aiming for. You can see what makes an A star answer for both English language and English literature. Students have access to these too but it's just so that parents can see what the benchmark is because we're all aiming for those top grades and this is what we need to do to get them. As always, the English department are always available for you to ask questions or to come in and speak to us. Don't hesitate to email your child's class teacher or to email me dyoung at chesterton.cams.sch.uk. And we wish all of our students the best of luck with their English exams.